Ross Hardware has been around since the 50s. Uh, my father-in-law immigrated to uh, Canada from Italy. And uh, with uh, seven people, it was hard for uh, to get a place. They kept moving. So he decided to buy. This came up because, oh, this is good. I live upstairs. I'll have the kids helping me in the business. And he did it. The biggest changes that we faced is in the 90s, it was all about big box retail. It was really easy for somebody to say, oh, you know, I'm just going to go to Walmart or Home Depot to try to save 50 cents or a dollar. That's tough when someone is willing to kind of get in their car because they don't want to spend the extra 50 cents. Uh, and that's kind of since evolved. So we now have issues with Amazon and online retailers where it's the same thing. Somebody might come in and look up something online and say, oh, I can find this online right now for a dollar cheaper. Can you match that price? It's really tough for a small business to compete with retailers like that and so that's why we really lead with the services that we provide the advice that we provide um, we don't want to chase somebody to the bottom of what prices look like because otherwise we would never survive and kind of be around for as long as we've been it also helps that they live upstairs and so they are oh, really 24 yes. hour and so somebody might call in the middle of the night because their power went out and they need a new fuse and so 11 o'clock at night we open up the door and sell them a fuse or sell them whatever they yeah. need so I think that really contributes to the success is when you're in a bind and you need somebody you know that you you can call the hardware and somebody's going to be here to answer and really help you out. In the 90s, I used to go to uh, um, content sales and pick up a few pieces to decorate the place. Some of our friends, uh, because of what they look uh, are collectibles, and they say, oh, I don't want to toss this in the garbage. I would prefer you guys have it. So we pick it up and um, it giving love and care and it goes from here to other people's houses. So uh, I do fix quite a lot of stuff too. Uh, we've also just got a lot of kind of really kind of eclectic houseware, so things like vintage knobs, glass handles that used to be in houses hundreds of years ago. Uh, so as folks are renovating their home, they're looking for comparable knobs to really make sure that they're honoring the historic character of their home. So we've got some really interesting pieces like that. Uh, a lot of brass and a lot of pewter items. Uh, so definitely things that you just don't find at kind of your run-of-the-mill hardware shop. So these are probably from the 1950s, more or less. Vintage board games from like the 1940s and 50s, 1970s, made in Toronto. Uh, really rare that you find ones like these. And they all have their pieces, they're all intact. So it's a 1930s, kind of just post-prohibition liquor bottle. We're pretty sure it's wine, just based on some of the research that we've done on it. Well, my father-in-law worked up 85 years old. He gave up at 85. I hope we can beat him. <laughs> I live upstairs, I love this area. I'm not gonna go nowhere. This is it. I immigrated this area and I'll die in this area. I love it. It's one of the places where we know people for 30, 45 years. So, we care.